Eight o'clock hour of the South Shore's morning news on a Friday morning. Thank you so much for being with us in studio in this segment. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the broadcast. It's been several years since uh, she has been in studio. International motivational speaker. She is uh, based on the South Shore. Becky Curran Kakula. Becky, good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be here. Well, thanks for coming in. You had uh, mentioned, I guess it's been uh, a long time. Uh, it's been more than a couple years that you were in studio to share with us your story and how you were motivating others and speaking to inspire people. Uh, tell us a bit about your story and kind of what you've been up to. Absolutely. I think it's been like a decade since I first came here on the show and And I've really spent the past decade honing in on my public speaking skills, speaking in a lot of schools, Mm -hmm. especially on behalf of children with disabilities. So I've kind of found my niche when there is a student who's transitioning from elementary to middle school or middle to high school, and they're about to meet a whole new group of people, and they don't want to answer the hard questions. So I go into the schools, and I allow the kids to ask me the hard questions, with hopes that that can make for a smoother transition. Uh, And I kind of started that as a person with dwarfism born into an average type family. My parents had no history or knowledge of dwarfism in the family. And we went to a doctor when I was about six months old, and he had mentioned do the best you can to keep Becky in the same school system. Mm -hmm. A lot of families can't always control that because they have to move because of jobs and family plans. But it really helped having me in the same school system. And I even had a friend who was in my class from preschool to seventh grade as an ally. And I don't believe that I experienced any bullying because of my physical difference during those early years because I had the right support. Mm -hmm. And not all students can have that experience. And I hope to continue to share that experience with communities to allow them to be more inclusive. And I've also spent time working with corporate America on disability inclusion. A lot of companies are fearful of addressing disability because they don't want to use the wrong terminology. Mm -hmm. So several years ago, I joined a board. It's called the National Center on Disability and Journalism at Arizona State University. And there's this great style guide that was initially meant for journalists, but it helps everyday people. It talks about different disabilities and the preferred terminologies and the preferred things we hope for people to avoid when they're addressing us. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I tell people, just call me by my name. And as we get to know each other, you'll start to learn more about the terminology. Well, her name is Becky, and she is in studio this morning. And so you're talking about your own story to inspire others. And you mentioned that you found your schooling to be a good experience. When you look back? Yes, I grew up in Weymouth. So I was also fortunate that my mother worked in the school system and she was well respected as a special education teacher in middle school. I never had her as a teacher. I did not have to Mm -hmm. um, go through classes that were uh, outside of the traditional classes. But because she was in the environment and people respected her, I think that was an additional asset. Mm -hmm. And then another thing was getting involved. I got involved in student council and other activities as soon as possible in order to make as many friends and allies. So what advice would you have uh, for parents who uh, have a child with disabilities or anyone listening this morning that has a disability that is uh, concerned about uh, what their experience might be in school? I would say don't be afraid to speak up and ask for what you need. I think A lot of school administrators are willing to make the accommodations. They just don't know what accommodations are needed. Mm -hmm. And then even for parents who are with children who may not yet have a disability, we say disability is the one category that anyone could fall into. Don't take away your child's curiosity. Allow them to go up to people who are different and ask questions. We rather you do that than pull them away and 
add to the additional fear factor. Mm -hmm. That's so important. And people, by the way, can uh, learn more about Becky's story. Uh, uh, You can find BeckyMotivates.com as your website to learn more about Becky Curran Kakula. as She has done uh, speaking not only around the area, but uh, all around the globe. And so, Becky, what are are some of the other projects you're working on? You mentioned uh, talking a lot in schools and then also working with corporations. It's kind of in your focus. Yeah, so a lot of corporations are fearful of hiring talent with disabilities, and we want to get them to understand that people with disabilities are problem solvers. Even my everyday life experience, when I get up in the morning, I have to make sure there's a step stool next to my bed, a step stool next to the sink, pedal extensions on my car for driving, all these different adaptations that I have to do before even leaving the house in the morning. And those are skills that I can bring to the workplace So people with disabilities have a lot to offer. It's just that people want to be given a chance to be a part of the workplace, be a part of the environment that we all live in. Over 20% of the population has a disability, and that's what we hope to see representation in the workforce. Well, well, that is important. Yeah, you're right about that. All the different things that, that you have to do in your life and that other people with different disabilities may have to do in their lives. And you're right, problem solving would be a big thing. And being able to adapt your brain to all these different ways to, to thinking, which some of us might not even have thought about. Exactly. And that's what you can do. So that's important, uh, talking about uh, workplaces and then also working with uh, children as well. And we know that, unfortunately, um, bullying can happen to anyone and that's such a big thing in school and i think about you know fortunately when we were growing up uh, we didn't necessarily have the online cyber bullying do you think it's gotten worse for for kids today i think you hit the nail on the head with the cyber bullying i think because we have so many more outlets for communication It's allowed for more risk when it comes to bullying, but also it allows for opportunity for education as well. Um, Something that I'm also a part of is a board in the town of Newton called Understanding Our Differences, and it's getting at the kids at a young age with or without disabilities to understand different types of disabilities and the people they may come across in everyday life. And if we can get at kids at a young age, hopefully that can lead to bullying prevention and awareness and turning people into allies before they even have a chance to become a bully. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great idea. Uh, BeckyMotivates.com is the website. Becky Curran Kakula, international motivational speaker. And of course, she is based on the South Shore, so we're very lucky to have her as she uh, works to spread her message around the world. And Becky, if people want to get in touch with you or have you speak to their organization, can they do that through your website? Absolutely. Or you could just go to beckymotivates at gmail.com, send me an email, and I'm happy to come wherever, especially on the South Shore. I love it. Beckymotivates.com. Becky Curran Kakula, international motivational speaker with us today. And And uh, let's not wait another decade. We'll get you back again uh, sooner, Becky. Uh, I can't believe it was so long. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in, Becky. Have a good weekend.